Hydantic is a great library to put into your existing code to better handle and manage your data when you're working in Python. So I've got this code on my screen here and what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to add our Pydantic models to it. Now the thing with this data is that it gets an awful lot of data. This is a large JSON file and we just simply aren't going to be interested in all of it. So what we can do is we can create a couple of Pydantic models to actually load that data into so we can choose by naming the fields correctly what information we want and we can basically just discard the rest. This is much easier and much more uh, neater and reusable than actually trying to index the different fields uh, or using the get on the dictionary for example. Okay, so let's just uh, have a look at the data that has come back from this. So this is a Shopify store. So we have all of this JSON information, like different product variants and thing, all of this sort of stuff, which is just not going to be relevant to us in this case. So we're going to pick just some information and we're going to grab that instead. So let's come out of here and we're going to come into our code and we're going to uh, import in uh, Pydantic. So we do from Pydantic, we're going to import in base model for now. We'll just start with this because of course we can do validation. So we will add that in afterwards. For each one of these products in our data that we get in there, there is this variant piece information here. This comes under the variants. You can see that here. So this is going to be uh, part of our nested uh, models that are going to be linked together. So this has all this different information. We're just going to grab a few different bits. So the first one that I want to create is actually going to be called variants. So let's go ahead and have a new class. Let's put it here. Uh, we'll call this class variant. And it will be part of our base model like this. Now we can say what information we want. Let's just grab the title, which was a string. And then let's also grab the SKU, which was a string, and also the price, which was also a string. Now it's important to note that these fields here that I've got here actually match these ones because then Pydantic is going to put that information in there uh, correctly. So I've got title, SKU, and price right here. There we go. So let's go ahead and um, <clears throat> add in our next model which is going to be product. Let's have class product and again base model and we'll have the ID of the product which will be an integer. Uh, we'll have the, let's go back up and find the actual product information. Here we go, we'll have the title and that'll probably do for us in, there, in that case. So let's go, so we'll have title which is going to be a string and I think then that will do. So now we just need our variants because a variant can, uh, a product can have multiple variants. So this needs to be a list of variant like this. Let's save. So this is basically our models constructed. So what this one means here, this product is that it's going to grab the ID and the title, and then it's going to populate it with these variants. Now, when we actually add the data into these models, it means that we can then have access to the dot notation to get it, and we can also export it as diction uh, as a dictionary if we wanted to, if we wanted to move this data on, and we can even do validation, as I said, which we will do in a minute. So let's come back down to here where our products our main product our main function is and we're just printing the product out what we're going to do is we're going to say instead we're going to load it in so we'll have our item is equal to our a instance of our product class and then we're going to unpack the products that we've got from each each one because we're looping through each product in that json list like this then let's just print out the item now uh, and see what we get back let me go save Let's come to my terminal, let's clear this and we'll go Python 3 main.py and there we have our actual export from our Pydantic model that we've created and you can see we have the ID, the title and then a list of variants which matches our variants list here that has the title SKU and the price. Now this is pretty handy and it's actually very useful when you're dealing with large JSON data that you might be requesting from an API or something like that because what we can do now is if suddenly you think well actually I need some more information I want something else in here uh, I think it's grams we can add that in I think it might be I think it might be an integer let's find out 
and we can now go ahead and do our Python 3 main again. And now we have the actual grams weight of that product as well. So you can see how you can then just go through and add the information in that you need when you're wanting to get more. And I've just dumped the rest of it. I just don't need it in this instance. What we can also do is if we were to uh, if this was part of our application or maybe we needed to do something this, with this data, we can then do, I believe it's as dict like this, not as dict, it's just dot dict like this. And if we now run again, we're going to get the dictionary out, which we can then, of course, use as JSON within Python. So we could send this to an endpoint in our application or... Uh, whatever we wanted to do with it, it's all there. So this is really useful. So let's go ahead and just check out the actual validation that we can use as well. I find this is particularly useful when you're dealing with data that you're getting into your application somehow or somewhere. Uh, so you can actually validate it and spit it back out if it doesn't fit what you need. So we need to go ahead and import in validator as well. And I'm going to validate on the variant class here. So we'll do... Um, at validator and we need to tell it which field we want to validate on so i'm just going to validate on the skew field here and now we can have a function which is going to check the uh, data and the skew so let's say check skew length and then we pass in uh, instance of the class and the value and now we can have uh, let's just um, required let's make a variable for this i don't actually know how long these skews are Required length is, let's say, 10. So let's do if uh, uh, len of our value does not equal the required length, we can then raise, I'll raise an error in this case, we'll raise a value error saying uh, skew must be 10 characters long like this. That'll do. Uh, otherwise, we're going to just return value like so. So let's save, and I believe these ones are 10. So we'll run, so we get no errors. But if we were to change this required length, say we only want interested in SKUs that are 12 characters long, what we're gonna find in this case, because we have put in the uh, value error, it's just gonna go ahead and it's gonna fail straight away. It's gonna say, hey, these don't fit in. So we now have a way of capturing that before it gets further into our system and causes an actual error somewhere. So if you haven't started using Bidantic or even data classes or something like that in your code, I think you can see from this that you really should start to put these in regardless. Even if you're not building a web application or an API, if you're just handling data in some way, using Pydantic to manage it or data classes, something like that, is going to improve your developer experience and the readability and the actual uh, robustness of your code by a lot. So if you've enjoyed this video and you want to know more about actually getting the data like I did here, you're going to want to watch this video next.